Today, Guido Roth from ADAPT is with us here at AAC in our workshop about High Street Alive. ADAPT um, is an office uh, who already is thinking sustainability in a way that um, uh, we want to encourage um, you to design your uh, projects in this workshop. And I'm very excited um, that Guido Roth uh, accepted the early morning slot to come to us and give us an insight and put together this lecture especially for you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for inviting a small Danish office to your AAC. So, um, yeah, I brought a few projects with me and but also a uh, a short introduction to our office and the way we work. So I think it could be kind of interesting to have an overall approach before showing some pictures and renderings and stuff. Yes, so um, let's get started. Who's Adept? We were founded in 2000, 2006 in, in Copenhagen. This is our team. We are an interdisciplinary office. Uh, in our team we have like architects, urban planners, landscape architects, and also some, some other engineers dealing with biddings and stuff. Yeah, we are around 50 people now, um, working mainly in Copenhagen and in Hamburg, as you see here. So this is our main office in Norbo, and uh, we have a, a second office here in Altona, not, not far from here, but it's it's pretty small. So we have 40 people in, in Copenhagen and 10 people uh, in Altona. So yeah, we mainly work in Scandinavia and Germany, but uh, we're trying to spread out a bit. So you can see what we, what we already did and we are kind of working in developing our outreach, I would say. So um, yes, I already explained what are we actually doing. We, we are trying to work on those different three fields, like um, urban planning, master plans, architecture, and, and landscape. I just uh, brought a few examples what we are doing. These are kind of uh, selected master plans we are working on, mainly Scandinavia and Germany. And yeah. You might recognize Oberbewerder here, but and also over here. Let's see how it works here. Ah, it's here. Okay. Wow. Good. And yeah, some selected architecture or buildings we are working on, or we already worked. It's like maybe you know uh, harbor houses in Aarhus, or you you've seen uh, the Tapstein Brewery, the Tap Tap House already, or Theodora House in the Carlsberg area in Copenhagen, or maybe a few of the students know the architecture school in Aarhus. We did, yeah. So why are we in Germany? These are our projects in Germany we have. This is uh, our starting point is Oberbewerder in Hamburg, an urban competition we, we won a few years ago, which we are currently working like uh, on the function plan which is a, a very abstract plan for the, you know, for the local plan, for B plan, you call it. So, and uh, a big architecture project we are working on is the Bezirks am Wandsbek, a uh, huge office building, uh, full timber building. We have like the Marina House in, in Berlin. We are working on a uh, refurbishment and a transformation of an old, uh, yeah, marine building, office building. And this year we were a bit lucky to win a, a small competition in Bagdeheide for a, for a bank. And this is um, the second urban project we have. This is a very ambitious, sustainable urban development project we have in, in Cologne called Woodhood. And yeah, in May we could also win the urban competition for the old freight station in Köpenick in Berlin which we are really lucky about and we are very happy. So, but what is our overall approach? Uh, we, are, we are trying to focus 
a lot. No, because it's, it's like really, you know, you see this and you see, oh my God, are they really trying to do this? But we are trying to do this, you know. This is, this is really what we believe in, what is really important. I mean, you're, you're hearing that constantly, but this is really our overall core of the project. Doesn't matter if it's landscape, urban design, or architecture. So holistic sustainability is what we come from, but there's also kind of this urban and social uh, approach that we have that, that we do believe that, that a project must fit into where it is placed. So it's not kind of a icon that is coming from somewhere. It is to be placed somewhere in a surrounding community and somewhere in the context you will find at your place. And of course, we do believe that there is a scale which we have to follow, that we have to take care and that our new development is also responsible for creating some kind of context in the social community. So what is your house doing? Not only placing volumes and nice facades, is it, is it contributing to the social impact of a town, of a quarter, of a neighborhood? So let's see later if, if we can do it. But yeah, these are the uh, main goals that we have. It's a kind of a diagram which shows how we are uh, or how we would like to work. It's not always this way, but you see here, this is our approach and this is the process we, we are following in our project. And you see in the beginning, we have a really wide horizon that we're trying to follow. And we, we talk a lot about those things. And then later on in the later phase, it's, it's actually kind of a, a normal project. Yeah, this is the thing I like the most. <laughs> if, you, if you think about what you know before starting a project, you might think, oh, we know a lot. I have a lot of consultants. We are good planners. We are good architects. We know a lot. We can handle everything, nearly everything. But if you start the process and if you see what kind of disruptive uh, process we are in now, you begin to learn that, that the thing we know is is little and then you might know what you don't know and you have some consultants for it but in the end you know that there are a lot of things that are coming up in the process which you can't really predict and this this is the thing we like a lot and we do believe that you know that you need kind of a really good team interdisciplinary approach and stakeholders which you are trying to involve in all the projects this is a kind of a simple what we are trying to do then um, involve a lot of people, not only because we, we like talking and communicating, because we think that is interdisciplinary work is, is producing better results. And you can face with the things you don't know much better. So our method is, is mainly uh, scenario based. We are trying to work with a lot of scenarios, not only architecture wise or volume or testing, also um, regarding the other qualities we were already talking about. And this, will, this is just an example of the harbor houses, how we develop the, the volumes. Yes. And this is a strong word, mission. <laughs> but um, regarding what we are trying to, to work on in, in terms of uh, sustainability, we have kind of three things we are constantly thinking about. The one thing that is really important, and I think there's uh, much more room for it now, is regenerating the things that are already there. It's not only uh, reducing LCA or have an eye on, on what resources do we use. We also have to take care and to regenerate the natural systems, like biodiversity, the things we are working on constantly in the landscape environment. The second thing is for sure, you all know it, is eliminating pollution and also CO2 emissions. And yeah, we have an example how we, how we do it in the office. We kind of trying to do iterative uh, LCAs, which in, I don't know, in Germany it's Ökobilanz. They are really good consultants. We are not on that level, but regarding our design process, we're trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. It's not very precise, but it's good to, uh, for decision-making with the client. So, and, 
and this is also really important, it's not only about LCA and regenerating, it's also about resources. So for example, if you, if you are discussing about uh, concrete, there are already a lot of good products. I mean, we are mainly working with wood, but there are also good, good concrete products with recycled things in it, but it still needs a lot of sand. You have to figure out this one. There might be a good LCA for this product, but if, you, if you're looking at this, there might be a different view on it. So, and this is also quite interesting for us as, as planners and architects, that uh, before you use the building or the structure you were thinking about and building for years, you already uh, imitated 70% of the whole stuff. So, and this is not something, something that makes us kind of depressive. We think that's uh, something we should take care of in our design process. This is, this is us here. And we are responsible for 70%. The other stuff are the other guys maintaining and using the building. But this is the responsibility we have. But also, I think it makes great fun to take it as a, as a challenge, as an opportunity. The use of materials, um, as I already mentioned, is, is quite important regarding LCA and uh, the resources we are using from the earth. So uh, I think you all know this pyramid. It's like this sugar pyramid from, for the, from the 80s. I know everyone is showing it. So just, just briefly, we are, tr we are trying to focus a lot on this uh, natural material stuff that is uh, CO2 positive, if possible. So using wood, straw and other materials, if possible. And then we are trying to, to see, of course, we, need, we do need cores that are from concrete now in Germany. So it's, there's no way out of it. But trying to push this one rather than always taking this one like a lot of aluminium and some chemical materials. But it's not, a, it's not a war in our office. It's not something ideologic. We are trying just to focus on this, and then if we see that's not possible, we are, we are also taking a few things from the other pyramid section. So, yeah. So there are mainly those two different uh, types of material. As I already said, we really try to focus on this one, but it's also necessary to, to take technical materials as well uh, during the process. And the good thing is that we are like, or the, the, the industry is developing a lot of resource materials and upcycled materials, which you can use for your project. And it also has a good, good impact on, on the CO2 emission on the LCA. So, um, yeah. I really like this one as well, because uh, you can see here, this is the circle is 100% building. It's the building parts of a building. You can see which part of the building is, is creating what kind of emission for the whole LCA analysis. So, and if you are talking about how difficult it is to, to get uh, sustainable solutions inside a project, it's not the whole thing you have to do at first. I think it's great to to work for some parts of it to get started. As you can see here, I mean, you see decks and structure is, has a lot of impact on the whole LCA. So before getting crazy about this whole circle, you think we can't do it, it's too complicated, no one can afford it. Start trying to do just parts of it, trying to, to have a sustainable structure. Maybe just use the facade you do always, like aluminum or stuff, but trying to start this thing, it really uh, pushes you to 40%. And then in the next project, you will start maybe uh, taking all the other parts as well. So that's, that's one thing we, we do believe in to get started with sustainable projects. So this is, uh, yeah, I already mentioned this one, our, our life cycle analysis tool, which is very rough. It comes from our architect uh, BIM model. And it's really a rough uh, analysis we do sometimes, not always, to convince uh, a client of, of what he can do. You see here how we are trying to convince him. Uh, you know, there are these slogans, business as usual. 
and the other stuff. And then you can see how this is developing in your analysis. Um, yes, another uh, strategy which is, which is really important for sustainable architecture is uh, disassembly, that you start to think about how is this thing going to be yeah, disassembled when it's not needed. Where's the material going? Where's the structure going? Because you, yeah, you might think that the building is lasting for hundreds of years, but it's actually like 25 to 50 years. So you do have to think what is going to happen with the structure and how do we construct those, those structure we have to disassemble one day. So these are just kind of a, uh, it's a, it's kind of a book or some kind of advice how you can how you can face this, that you, I mean, minimize number of components you are using. Avoid, I mean, avoid chemical components is pretty sure. I mean, use fewer materials, and if you if you do if you do put them together, try to put those materials who, who do belong together, wood and wood, and don't take like glue, kind of a, a, a thing to wood that it's not. Can, can be separated, if possible. It's not always possible these days. So, and also when we, when we do think about our, our buildings, we do believe that you need to have a look on which part of the building is, is like uh, lasting for how many years. So you know which materials you can, you can put together maybe, and which is not good to put together in a, in a structure. Yes, so. Let's go to some examples and, and uh, yeah, see if we are, if we are <laughs> getting there with our projects. So this is the first one from, um, from uh, this year. We were lucky to, to win a competition in a very small town called Bagde Heide. This is, this is us here in Hamburg and this is uh, the way to the Baltic Sea in Lübeck and uh, yeah, in the middle there's a small town called Bagde Heide. And Volksbank is, yeah, it's, it's a communal bank in Germany, which is also orientated to profit, but they, they have a little bit more common thinking in their, in their minds. So they bought a piece of land somewhere in a really industrial complex, which is not really nice, but they had kind of a, a nice view on a landscape surrounding, and here's a, a supermarket and kind of a parking parking lots and other guys working there and what was our yeah our approach to this because we are always looking on connecting things together we are not always having something that's landing there so we were thinking okay the project must have a connection and the things are there we it's really hard to connect to the supermarket with a sustainable office so we thought it might be good to bring, bring some kind of the, uh, some parts of the landscape elements into the project and to place a sustainability on a kind of green island that's focusing on biodiversity and not so much on the surroundings architecture we have there. So you see here, this is the, this is the plot, big street here and the surrounding landscape. And we try to minimize uh, our footprint and bringing a lot of landscape and biodiversity things in, into the project. And you see here, we, we categorize some of the elements we are finding they are very easy and trying to adapt them to our site. So that's what you can see here. You can see this is our, our plot, like a green island, a very simple volume, and our biotops that we are placing around this building. The program for the, for the building is uh, pretty easy. It's an administrative building. And this is uh, a diagram which we did in, in the competition. The client was asking for like 4,000 square meters of administration, but he just wanted to use 50% of it. So he had a kind of good mindset according to flexibility and what the future use of, of office building would be like. So we knew that's not only his building, it will be the building for a lot of people coming also from the outside, from back to Heide or somewhere. And so this is the diagram we made kind of 
this is uh, the program of the bank, like 1,500 square meters to 2,000 for the bank. And this is the other stuff from the other tenants we don't know yet. But the approach was we don't want to have a closed shop system inside this building. A lot of doors, we want to have a really good communication place inside. Because these are supposed to be our clients, which like small startups and firms. We have the money and we want to talk to them a lot. So uh, how did we... Uh, how do we get to the solution here, to, the, to our approach? We have uh, a ground floor, which is mainly for communication. We have a system of circulation between our, our slabs. And you see it's a very simple slab structure, which is really focusing on very traditional office systems, which is no big deal. So here you can see uh, in this diagram, this is uh, the bank. These are the other guys, and what we do, we are trying to uh, have a kind of communicative circulation system which is connecting all slabs, and uh, this is kind of a cafeteria space on every floor where they can meet. So this is uh, yeah, also a diagram where you can show it in, you see the volumes that we have, like um, tenant and bank and the, uh, the ground floor communication zone here. So we are coming from the uh, really nice supermarket parking lot, <laughs> entering our green island. And yeah, we have uh, something for bicycles next to the building, which is not placed inside the building, which is showing like, hey guys, we have a little bit of new mobility here inside our office. We have like biodiverse landscape a little bit. And then we are trying to, to get the people inside the building and uh, it's a very easy way of organizing uh, the plan. We have like um, bank and tenants, and we have two cores. We have the circulation system in the middle, and we have the atrium in the middle, which is like connecting the floors and hopefully providing a lot of communication. Yeah, this uh, a section through the atrium. Yeah, a very rough uh, 3D sketch from the competition phase, which is really roughly showing material and impression. It's not an oval rendering from all the surfaces we have there. But it shows a little bit how easy we wanted this space to be and how approachable it, it has to be for a bank in Bagde Heide, because it couldn't be like a bank you have in Frankfurt or in Munich because it's a really small town. Yeah. So uh, it's a full timber construction building. You can see here, it's a five to eight meter grid. And we are always trying to see in those diagrams which, which material we are using and which materials could be disassembled and not. And yeah, it's the main construction is wood. We're trying to uh, to also take wood f as our w wall system and also for windows. There's one thing we can solve today in Germany is uh, the surface of the slabs. You need to do heavy because of physics. There's no other way in Germany yet. I even if you do a full timber building, you need to have a lot of loads on the slabs because otherwise you hear the guys on top of you. That's the way it is. It's a, some kind of a strange thing we have here. We, we build a full timber building, which, is, which can be disassembled. And then on top of it, we pour 10 centimeters of concrete. So yeah, that's the thing where we fail every day. Because you have to, I mean, if you do those projects, you have to fulfill all regulations. It's not a, it's kind of a dream, but it also has to be sold and maintained. Yeah, this is the facade and project we have like, two really strong uh, ideas. One strong idea is the, is the wood cube inside and the, uh, the metal material outside protecting the wood and also um, taking care of fire escape. And uh, yeah, it's the way from, from the office to the, to the core and to the staircase. That's a detailed section just to show you roughly. This is, the, this is the main wood core, windows, a lot of beams and tall beams. That's a different difference to concrete. It 
really ends up with a lot of beams. <laughs> but it's good, you have to deal with a lot of uh, design thinking while showing those beams and structure. It's not like we used to do before, like you have like very thin concrete slabs, very thin like columns, and you just are hiding it everywhere. So it's another approach that you need to have, yeah. In the facade, we are trying to also push a little bit this, this green. It's not really important for sustainability, you have to say. It's good for cooling, and it's good to show and have a little bit of biodiversity also in the vertical section, but it's not main, mainly the most important thing. Yes, this is the main entrance, yeah. So uh, the second project I want to show is also a small green island. It's very small. I'm sorry, I know you, you wanted to focus on very big projects. So I'm, I'm sorry, this is, this is another small one. But I, I just wanted to show because it's, uh, yeah, very briefly, because it's uh, also very easy, easy construction we are putting inside a park. Um, it's also placed in Hamburg. It's a, it's a public client, also Sprinkenhof. You are working for as well, I guess. Uh, it's more east of the center. It's called Hammer Park. It's a listed park, actually. Very small, but very nice. And, um, uh, wait, sorry. Um, I have to go back. I just wanted to show you the plot, where it is. So this is the site. It has to be located here. And we did a small proposal. It was a kind of a, a competition. We have uh, in Germany kind of a, a different competition that you guys might know. It's called VGV. It's a, it's, small, it's a small proposal for a public client. So you, you're not handing in like huge panels. So you're handing in five A3 a with a concept and a strategy for a building. So yeah, we could win this one. And this is a very simple idea. So we are trying to place a, a very simple building with no back sides in a park. It has no back sides or front sides. We just put it like a very easy building. And the, the use is a kind of a, I would say, a house, house for the youth, or is it Jugendzentrum? You call it in Germany. It's, it's a house for young people and a, a meeting point for the elderly. And we have those two programs you can see here. This is uh, home for the elderly. This is the youth thing, uh, youth thing. And then on top, you, you mix both zones. Yeah. A very easy um, full timber construction. It looks a little bit like a barn, actually. <laughs> and that's the structure from inside. You have the, the entrances, two entrances, one for the senior guys and one for the youth. And then you have uh, kind of a little bit uh, zone for those two programs, and then on top of it, it's it's mixed. And yeah, like always, we're trying to to see where's the connection to the existing zones in the park. What's uh, what's the transition like from inside to outside? That's mainly, or that's also what we call human scale. What we are thinking about is not only like nice small building, but also how is the transition really like? Where are you sitting? If you want to have a coffee, where are you smoking or whatever? So this is the transition zone, we call it, from the facade to the, to the garden. Yeah. And again, you might see this. this uh, we always use this uh, kind of drawing to show the construction, also a full timber building. Uh, we, are, we are trying to use bricks from the demolished building, which is not very easy yet. Uh, if you're asking the structural engineer. <laughs> but yeah, we are discussing it. So, and it's, it's uh, the facade is modular. We're trying to do like a simple full timber structure, a timber roof. We are, we are trying to implement uh, photovoltaic and also a green roof. This is the south side, this is the north side. We, we, are trying to limit, we are trying to limit the uh, technical stuff inside the building. Think about like natural things in, in the building, which, which doors you are opening, which windows, and is there a ventilation side or not? So we, we do not have to build cooling. Yeah. 
this is an impression from inside. And yeah, very simple wood structure for the facade. Yes. So now we're traveling a little bit further east to Berlin. It's a more, more urban project, but it's uh, also not very big. <laughs> it's uh, the transformation of the Marine House. Uh, it's, it's located near the Museums Insel here, very famous place. You might all, all of you might know. So this is Mitte Spree. This is the Märkische Museum, Märkisches Museum, very famous museum in, in Berlin. And uh, this is location of the Marine House, which didn't really belong to the, this is, this is the existing building here. It didn't really belong to the museum, but they built it because it is listed and it used to be uh, a use for, actually for Marine, a Marine office building for the officers. And uh, after, after the First World War, it got a kind of an office building. So that's the way it looks before the uh, start of the construction site. And also, uh, yeah, the roof, there were like big holes in it, like nothing was really in use. So, and that was our, our, our proposal for the project because uh, one of the main things from the existing structure was that the slabs have to be demolished, all of the slabs, just the roof you could, you could keep because there was uh, 20 years of rain on the slabs and you couldn't really uh, help them. <laughs> so. This was a kind of a radical approach to this information. We are not using the slabs as you would like. We are just using the roof and we put a really simple volume with all of the needs and uses inside this building. You can see here. And this is the program. They wanted to have kind of a meeting, a, a ballroom studios for for artists and also like a foyer and uh, yeah, restaurants and workshops. And yeah, it's a very easy idea of placing it inside the building and then uh, also have circulation in this wood plug-in to the existing structure you can see here. We keep the roof, all of the slabs are gone and we put this wooden cube inside this existing structure. There's not a lot of design in it we just keep the existing roof, the existing walls, which we have to clean and stuff. But, and also our structure is, is mainly made of, of simple plywood. Yes, that's uh, the entrance area. Unfortunately, it needs to have a concrete structure. So that's we couldn't discuss. It is a wood cube with, a, with concrete columns. No, it's loads. It's loads and, uh, what do you say, grounding? Foundation. Yeah, foundation, yes. Yeah. Yes, so we are back in Hamburg. So let's see how many time do we have. Okay, that's still fine. So you're not sleeping, that's good. Um, yeah, we are back in Hamburg. Same client than uh, for the small house, the Jugend, uh, Springenhof. And... Um, it's a big office building for the municipality in, in Wandsbek. They were looking for a new uh, administration building. That was a, a competition we could win. I think it's four years ago, actually. Yeah, it's four years ago. And um, this is uh, Wandsbek, Alster. It's also the eastern part of Hamburg. You can see here, this is called Wandsbeker Zollinsel. This is a huge road and it's mainly uh, I would say, post-war urbanism there. A lot of streets, a lot of cars, not very tall buildings from the 50s, not a very pleasant place, but it needs to have a lot of administration and, and space. So this was, this is actually the program. And you see here, that's a long, long plot, not very good to do, but what we are trying to, to do is uh, to transform the volume to make it a bit more scaled to the surrounding places. So 
we did try to push those volumes down, push the other, take the other ones up, and also put them back and forth to have kind of a yeah, human scaled impression, I would say, from this tall program, because it would have been like a massive block without it. Really unreasonable. So a very simple, very simple idea of using those volumes. And we are also doing it with the facade. There's not only one facade uh, wrapping up on this volume. There's, uh, you can see here, there are three different types of facade grids we are using also to break the massive uh, impression of the building. It's not because we don't like, like massive buildings that could be really nice, but the surrounding area is really low and it wouldn't make sense to have this massive block around these uh, areas. So this is, a, this is the layout of the plants. Very easy, quite deep plants here, but I would say very rigid system, very reasonable for the administration. There was, so there's not a lot of radical changes inside those uh, plants. We have, we have like atriums, which are really nice, but the slabs and the uh, floor plants are quite, quite normal. So this is the entrance plaza. Yeah, this is gone because they decided that, that they need some light inside the office, unfortunately. <laughs> no, very reasonable. So there will be different kinds of uh, facade greening now, but it, yeah, not this way. So again, like you have seen before, a lot of timber. So it's a full timber building again, and cores are still made of, uh, of concrete. Uh, which we are not showing here, actually, that we have like a, a huge parking garage, concrete garage, yes, underneath, so, which we don't really love, but in this project it was really necessary, they were asking for it a lot, so it has like huge parking, gar parking garage, so it's, and it's, you know, that's always something you, c you can discuss, on top you make this, and then further down you just pour LCA and concrete in the ground, so that's, really one thing yeah, you have to discuss and sometimes you fail while discussing and sometimes you win. Actually, what the Volksbank doesn't have a parking garage underneath, which they were asking for. They were asking for a parking garage with 60 plots, uh, lots and uh, we didn't do it and tried to convince them that it's not necessary and they accepted it, which was pretty nice, but this time we failed. But this is okay. <laughs> we have a t full timber building on top so this is the atrium. Yeah, we are trying to uh, to have a lot of warm materials and to have a, a reasonable atmosphere for the guys working there and for guys visiting the the administration office. And I think from those who come from the office, they they might know how complicated it is in Germany to create a place like this, which you have like nice renders in the competition and you have to build it. It gets really complicated in terms of fire protection and yeah <laughs> but we are getting there so uh, yeah we talked in the introduction we talked about uh, the materials we are always trying to push the material thing inside the building a sustainable choice of what is possible we have some acoustic panels of eelgrass we're trying to work with clay inside which is really easy and nice to look at Yes, and those curtains, and of course the most important thing is the wood for the LCA impact. Trying to have those recycled stones for the facades, which we are now like working on, on the detailing, how does it work, and other guys from, it's a Dutch product, so we have to discuss with them if they are able to, to deliver a lot of stones, because they all come from the recycling process. So this is the impression from yeah, the base, very warm. We show the structure. We don't have any suspended ceilings there. Just this is suspended, actually. This is not true what I said. But we are trying to, to show also the technical uh, materials. And when it gets to like uh, the additional stuff and the, you see the eelgrass for acoustics and also like the normal furniture. Yeah, 
And you see this is the last impression for this one, the different grids in the facades, the greenery. So, and hopefully they will start building it. I think it's 25, start of 25, they will start building it. It's a huge project. It takes a lot of time to take this sustainability, sustainability stuff into the process, but we are now working on this construction documents. So, yeah. And then uh, one educational project from, from Aarhus, uh, which we could build the last years. It is now two years old. That's the, it's called New Arc. It's the new architecture school in Aarhus. It's actually the schools of the, it's the school of the partners. They all studied in Aarhus at the architecture school and uh, they could win the competition a few years ago and they were able like to get into the project. It's, it's, yeah, it's also the old uh, freight station district in, in Aarhus, quite central, Baltic Sea here, harbor, center. So, this is what it looked like before the construction site. It was actually a quite, it is still a quite, a quite nice site with a lot of informal space and architecture uh, around. You see here, yeah, but it's important. It's important. You have to take care of those guys as well to keep the spirit. I mean, if you have to Oberhafen in Hamburg, I hope you know it because it's the last place from Hafen City, which is kind of a little bit preserving the spirit of, of the old factory stuff. And I think the mixture could be quite nice. So we are always dreaming of this mixture, preserving a little bit of the old stuff and have new uh, architecture on top or besides of it. So this is not what we want, like an isolated icon. Uh, we would like to, to take the old structures inside the project, taking care of it and yeah, at the front, it's possible to get higher. At the back, taking care of the volumes and respect the things that are there. So you see, this is uh, a small perspective sketch from the surrounding, you see here. And then uh, there are the terraces from the architecture school and the urban, I would say, this is the urban transition from the, from the building. You have seen this one before. <laughs> it's mainly, mainly the same idea. One thing that, that, it's, that we have here is that we are dividing it in two programs. There's a flexible open program with this open slabs, but there's one program for the architecture school with all the workshops and the labs, which are very defined places. So you don't need flexibilities there. And this, this ends up to this, to this concept. We have those uh, fixed zones with workshops and laboratories, and then you have the flexible zones with the slabs. And then uh, if you mix it up, you hopefully get this one. So the terrace structure. Let's have a look at the, at the plans. This is ground floor. The back side of the project, you see here those concrete structures, defined places and the flexible zones here. We have two entrances, one urban entrance from here and one more private entrance from here. Mensa, library, a big workshop, which can be opened to this backyard and the auditorium. And then you have the circulation zone, which is going that way through the whole project. You have voids going down. And these are the really huge uh, workspaces for the students. And yeah, unfortunately, not a wood project. Big discussion, lots of loads. So we couldn't achieve at this point. So um, that's the 3D of the section. You see here again, those uh, concrete uh, elements and the voids, library, the terraces, and I hope you could feel the kind of communication uh, stuff that could be going on here, which is actually quite nice. And this is the, a view inside the workshops. Very simple. There's le nearly no detailing in this, in this fitting, really no. You see here, this is very simple, very simple. The whole project is very simple. You have plywood, you have some really nice 
windows actually, but the whole stuff is really made of basic materials, basic elements, nearly no detailing or, or very simple detailing with plywood. This is the administration. I mean, if you have ever been to a German university and had a look at the administration, you couldn't believe that someone in Germany is working like this. But actually, that's what I heard, that they like it. Also, the guys from the administration, because it's a totally different thing. Yeah, the students love it, but what is the administration doing here? But as I heard, it worked out quite well. So, yeah. Meeting rooms, also again, plywood, very simple materials. We keep the concrete slabs. We show all the uh, installation there. There's no detailing there, not, not a real detailing thing. You always take care how they do it and you might also draw something, but it's not like uh, in a very um, detailed and designy way. So that's the impression from the facades, uh, a very rigid grid and uh, the concrete thing that is popping out of the, the system of the building. Yeah, let's have a look. The clock, yes. So I think the title for this building is uh, a workshop, not a piece of art. So that's what, what the partners always explain, what this building should be like. So the whole educational stuff really being down to earth to be visible and not to be like something iconic and yeah, transparent. This is the workshop. You could see those old places here. And yeah, very normal elements here. And the library, the wood library that is uh, placed in, inside this uh, big void, which is actually not from us, I have to say. This uh, an element that was designed by Praxis, uh, a small architecture firm from, from Jutland. So it was, an, it was a competition they won for the library. And they also used, you know, those used, you see here, they are from an existing building. The structure is new, but the, the shelves are all old from an existing building. Yeah, so this is the last project which I brought because I had that you guys are thinking about a lot uh, about new urban solutions and high street uh, transformation. And let's see, maybe this can be like also like a blueprint for mobility. Uh, it's an it's a competition. We didn't win last year, but it was a competition for a mobility hub in Oberbillwerder. And uh, as I was showing uh, before, this is uh, the urban development of Oberbillwerder, which will be constructed from the beginning of 25. And this is the master plan. We did a plan for this whole thing. And um, as you can see here, there is a grid of mobility zones we are following because in all neighborhoods there are no parking places. You have to take the, those centralized hubs to put your car. We, you, are, you have a lot of reduced space for, for private own mobility. So that's the cops and odds behind this whole development. But as we all know, you, are, you have cars and you have to put there some a lot, not a lot, but you have cars, so it's zero. I think the the actual number is 0 0.4, so it would be like 40 percent, and not like it has to be usually one car per apartment. That's the rule it was. So now we have here a mobility. What is it? So this is the master plan. You see here, it is not placed somewhere here. It's directly placed on a central square because it should be something that's erecting like um, communication. It's not only like a park house, a normal parking garage. It is, it is planned as a, as a hybrid building and it, take, it takes care of our uh, urban design rules in height and massing. It's part of the green network and also uh, it's, it's creating this is, this is a neighborhood and it's also a kind of part of creating an identity for the neighborhood. So uh, 
transforming urban solution would also mean you have to think about new typologies. That's the important question here. So if you think about new mobility and transforming this question, you have to think about new typologies when you are uh, placing new buildings, volumes inside the town. So this very roughly, this is uh, from the urban plan, the volume you could do, and this is mainly the idea that you transform this volume into something different. We did do a, a very flexible structure. We have different themes for the, for the grid. You have an extension of the public uh, plaza to the building, which is, which is actually floating up. You have automated parking, which was asked for, and you have a park, you have different uses, and you could, like, in a flexible way, shift the program. And um, when you are thinking about your high street developments, I mean, there are always those parking garages, and it's always the question, what are we doing with those structures? It could be one of the ideas maybe to place a hybrid structure also inside those centralized zones. So this is like mainly the concept uh, sketch and always think about the transition to the public space. It's not like a single building, which is also, could also be very nice, but always think about transition to the public space. So just very briefly, the structure, the idea, the grid, automated parking, it's, it's not, nothing you can really design. It comes from the industry, it's, it's done. So you can just place it somewhere and try it to, to mix it up in a hybrid structure with some good elements you're using. Yeah, this is concept sketch how we think it could be, like designing in those uh, structures for mixed use zones and elevation. This is the uh, automated parking. We have different voids and terraces, but this is mainly automated parking and the garden, playground, sports facilities. Yeah, side plan. You see, it's it's it has a very prominent location <laughs> on a central plaza, and that's what it's all about. Also, when when talking about urban transformation, these hubs. They are important and not somewhere in a side street. I mean, if you are talking about, I think, Karstadt, yes, where's the, where's the parking garage? It's somewhere in a very narrow street, which is good, but it's not visible. It's just like a dead, dead volume. So just have a quick look at the, at the plans. Um, this is the side to the plaza. You have kind of a foyer for, for your car but you enter from this side. And this is the more commercial public side with cafes and institutions. Yeah, you need it. We need a lot of bikes. If you do a transformation, you always have to think about the alternative. And I think in our proposal, there are not a lot of bikes. There need to be much more bikes here. So, but it just shows that you, you put this uh, really rigid, rigid industrial machine inside something that is getting hybrid and something that is getting attractive. So top floor, parking machine, park. That's what it looks like from the top. Yeah, section. So yeah, but third price, but it was also good to do it. Yeah, to, to investigate by ourselves because we, we are doing the master plan and we wanted to work on this, on this idea. How could this thing look like? It was just a proposal. So we were happy about the third prize. But yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Guido Roth, for this relevant uh, insight into... Uh, how you work, and thank you very much for taking the time to detailing yes. it as for us as well. Are there any questions? Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, one question for me is do you think that flexible buildings like the last one are spe specific enough to be a human scale? I mean, most of the part you have just 
flexible and more flexible and mm -hmm. more flexible and you know don't have these specific rooms they are just take to human scale mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah should i answer to this yes so le let's go th that's a really good one and it's very important the frame is flexible and if you if you start programming it's not flexible anymore but you can change it but when you place the program you you're not flexible anymore because you really have to define those zones and that's a really good question you you have to take i mean if we have a look at the park it's it's really important that that you that you make up your mind how is this is this a nice place to be how will you how's the transition zone to this but this the, if you're doing the park, I think it's not that flexible anymore. The structure is flexi flexible before, but after programming, I mean, it takes a bit uh, transforming it. So after, after you, you, you have put the program inside the structure, I wouldn't say that's really flexible, but the idea how you, you can place the program in the, in the grid is flexible. And it's, it's right, it's, it's a big problem when, when uh, designing flexible programs that it's not specific enough to define it as a nice place, actually. Maybe it's too detailed, but could you elaborate a little bit about the, your um, fire security concepts and for the German wooden buildings? Yes, um, yes, a little bit. I'm a little bit more into Volksbank than Wandsbek, so I have to call my colleague for, for Wandsbek. <laughs> um, Yes, I mean, it's, um, it's mainly uh, investigating and, and, you know, if you do like a wooden building, it's always challenging because there are no, there are rules now with the Holzbaurichtlinie, but they're not suitable for modern buildings. So the problem is that the Holzbaurichtlinie in Germany is like a good way of starting to think about it, but it doesn't fit to the framework of what uh, clients are asking for because they're not asking for 200 square meter offices, which you have to do when you follow the Holzbaurichtlinie. They all want 400 square meters. They want like five or six story high buildings. So what, I mean, maybe we just, uh, just try to show, because we are actually discussing it right now. Wait. I'm a little bit into this one. Not really, but a little bit. Because there was also something we, we failed. This is a good story to talk about. So this is the structure of the plan. And uh, this is one fire zone you call Brandabschnitt. It's 400 square meters. This is 400 square meters. And well, it's a very easy way of to design it and which is like fitting to the fire regulations in Germany. You have a, a concrete core here, a concrete core here, and the first fire lane or fire route is always in the, in the concrete core, and you, then you go outside. So that's pretty sure. The problem is the second, second way we, wanted, we didn't want to place like a second one here because the building is very small. And then the idea in the, uh, in the competition was, and what I did before, is to have a building like this with, with concrete. It's very easy to, to take the second route outside. So for this uh, unit, the second route was here and go here. And for this one, the second fire route was here and here. But as we were discussing it with the consultants, what it means for the structure outside, because it has to be, pro if it's a fire way, it has to be fireproofed, as you all know and like everything gets very thick and complicated. So the structure, the steel structure. And what we are discussing now is um, that we are taking the people through the atrium because there's one thing, uh, we have this zone, this cafeteria zone in this atrium and we, we already have to do uh, sprinkler, sprinklers here. And we said, if we do have to, to do sprinklers anyway, then we can do the fire escape here through the atrium and then go out. And yeah, that's one thing. The, the structure is, well, there we have quite a good uh, regulation now. 
you can do it, but it's F120 to F90, and um, you're, n you're only allowed to uh, show 25% of the wood structure. So uh, we're not yet finished with the discussions with the fire engineers and the authorities, but it could be, I mean, we have shown it before. That's the reason why we, oh no, it's on this other hand here. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the, ah, uh, you see here, these surfaces are usually made of wood because it's a, it's a CLT full wood building, but we, we showed in the, in the renderers or in this 3D just the white surfaces because in our one spec project, you need to, uh, to protect the wood. So that's, that's a shame now. So these are the main elements is the surface. The fire protection for the, for the structure is okay now, but the, it's always the uh, discussion about what are you able to see and feel from the wood. I mean, I mean maybe you know this um, wood project in Hafen City, the tower, the residential tower, it's cladded everywhere. But it's still a good timber building because the whole structure is made of timber, all the decks, slabs, everything. One spec is spring as well. Which one? One spec. Uh, yes, yes, and that's mainly because of the atrium. Yes, which is a, this was a big fight and uh, because we thought it's, it's the main idea we have for the, for the office guys because the slabs and the office layout is so rigid and so normal. You need to have one space that it's really nice and really if you enter the building, there must be something which gives the building kind of an identity and a, and a special place to meet and also to feel that it has got a different vibe. So we are fighting for this atrium which is now like solved with many things like smoke uh, and Rauchungsklappen and I don't know how you call it in English, but there's a lot of technical stuff there. Um, this is a bit more general question. Um, I don't know if you, if you have worked in Denmark, but you emphasized sometimes in the presentation that there are some big difference between Denmark and or designing and planning in Denmark and Germany. Um, what are the biggest challenges in <laughs> Germany in comparison to Denmark? Um, I, would, I would say there's in ge there are some differences. Uh, I, think, uh, I think one difference is, could be the mindset a little bit, that they are willing to take risks to be uh, future proved. That's what they really have in mind. They know that they have to do something. But they are a small country, you know, they have a different setup. It's much easier to build for 8 million people sustainable than for 90 million people sustainable. So that's a different setup you always have to think about. Also when, when talking about mobility and the social environment in Denmark, which is really awesome, but it's a different setup. You can't really, but yeah, in, I mean, a, a question like for Uber Bavada, for the urban planning, they are really into public spaces. I mean, you can feel it everywhere in Copenhagen that the public spaces are so nice. So people use it. They're not afraid. There's not a lot of crime rates are acceptable. And regarding like German urban planning, we just won this competition in Köpenick and we placed the main school inside a park which has no playgrounds for the school single prayer. They go into the park and we nearly lost the competition because of this concept because they couldn't believe that it's that it will be working because of security. So uh, there's just a small example. We were talking about uh, spaces more shared um, earlier and uh, this this park example is, is, is one of them that you don't provide each space for each user. Mm -hmm. And you showed the mobility hub, which is almost uh, replacing what we are, what used to be uh, the commercial mm -hmm. uh, center mm -hmm. of a town. Can you talk more about um, what you think will be the future replacement of what is at the moment um, a commercial spots like restaurants or um, department stores? Yes, I mean we do. Uh. 
we have a clear vision of what is necessary. I think it's more about uh, building up communities and common grounds than uh, forbidding commercial uses. I think, as you all reckon, when you go to the Hamburg Center, there's a, a lot of misunderstanding what is a nice commercial and vibrant city. So if you see at the buildings, they're really awesome, nice streets, nice trees, but there is no real feeling after six o'clock. And it's mainly not because there's uh, commercial spaces, there's a lack of community living and uh, I would say non-profit communication as well. So it's, it's the way of what I showed in the beginning is the programming of, of what we are doing when, when we do urban planning. That's the first step. I think it's not so much about architecture. It's all also about architecture, but it's more the question when you do uh, projects like Hafen City, Grasbrook. Are we aware that we have to change the programming of those ground floor areas? Are we really aware that we have to be a bit more focused on on common uses to avoid like those dead streets? And this can evolve and erect a lot of good things also for commercial areas, you know? If, there every, if everything is dead, people won't come and won't buy anything. If there's a, a nice community like, I don't know, if you go to Schanzenviertel, there are all those shops now because it's a, it's a strange mix of a vibrant non-profit uh, thinking. If you go to and St. Paul, but there are now this, this galleries and stuff which are pretty commercial and worldwide spread like Weekend or the other stuff. So that could be a, a good mixture. But I think the most important thing is that we yeah, should invent more common grounds, public grounds and communities, which, which wouldn't like solve the whole commercial problems in this, in this European city. One more question over there. Um, hi. <laughs> I hi. just have a question about if you have any thoughts about how your buildings consume energy after they're built. Because um, I can see in a lot of your designs, I'm also a student from mm -hmm. um, Aarhus Architecture School, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have buildings and designs with a lot of glass mm -hmm. facades. Mm -hmm. And I've just experienced that in the summer it gets mm -hmm. extremely hot. It can be yes. over 40 degrees inside of the studios. Mm -hmm. And in the winter, it can be less than 18. And mm. it's just a really big difference from yeah. the seasons. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, because of the past year, it's been very expensive with en energy. And then they've had to set back yeah, with the energy consumption. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about like how these buildings work like, after they're built. Of course, we have to. So. Uh in general, there's one really good um, approach nowadays that there is a focus from, uh, from maintaining and using the building regarding LCA because we have a lot of regenerative energy in the future. So, I mean, we have to save energy for sure, but the, the energy we, we are getting, we are mostly in the future, we are getting from regenerative. Also in, in Denmark, there's a lot of, there's a high, uh, percentage of regenerative energy. So this narrows a little bit the impact of, of energy in the future because it's mostly regenerative. But uh, when you experience that the building is like too hot, too cold, then we did kind of a design mistake. That's for sure. But um, what we are trying to do, we, try, we are trying to limit the, uh, the amount of technical uh, installation inside the building. So. This might also be uh, one reason that uh, the new arc is getting maybe in the summer on 10 or 15 days too hot, but you are not uh, you are not having installation for cooling. Maybe the uh, this glass surface is pretty much too hot. The amount of glass I would say is maybe not well done. But the other thing is that we are always trying to. Uh, to build those cooling installations inside the building. That's what we're not lying to, trying to do. Then to, uh, to answer with the architecture on this. And maybe in New York, it's, it, it was a kind of mistake at some point that this didn't work out, which we are always uh, facing that we do mistakes at some point. But we are like facing this, 
this problem, how you are living in those. I mean, that's what it's about. After using it, it should be reasonable and nice inside. And if you have the feeling that inside the studios you can't work in the summer, it's not really good, <laughs> I guess. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait. I, I'm just trying to show maybe House der Jugend is a good example, I think, for a passive. Uh, also, Volksbank is kind of a good example for a passive, uh, for passive sun shading. Yes, that we are trying to do here, because we know we don't want to build a cooling system. Um, we are actually discussing it with the client because he's really afraid. But it takes a lot of energy and a lot of LCA. So um, at the moment, because not everything is coming from regenerative sources. So uh, s this is an example, I think, how we are dealing like in a good way. But we are actually discussing the, uh, the glass facades at the moment with the physician. So we will close a lot of uh, yeah, uh, facades as well. And also for Hoster Jugend, I think you can see maybe Oh, well, sorry, back and forth, mixed up here. That we also have kind of this idea of like have a passive cooling when, when having the structure of this roof, making natural sun shading. So actually we are thinking about it a lot, but when New York is not working, <laughs> it's not good. Yes. With, the, with the heat increasing, uh, shading may, might not only be um, necessary, but also uh, ventilation or air movement. Yes, but it's, I mean, that's what, uh, if you, I mean, if you talk about human scale and also like uh, the use of a building should be fine and reasonable, then if, if, if you are studying there and it's too hot and you can't go there to, to build your models, then it's a problem. Then you did a design mistake. That's my clear answer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning of your presentation, you said uh, a lot of stuff about the design for this assembly. And I wanted to know like, what the challenges are in reality when you want to this, mm -hmm. uh, like like uh, remove the parts mm -hmm. and then store them together somewhere until they're used in another building and I want to know also how in what uh, like to what extent you're using this this concept yeah, yeah. Um, first of all we we use this method as a construction manual for our office and we did this tap house I just trying we did one really small building whole building with it but it's really small, which let's try to find it. Aye, aye, aye. So, so this, this one. And um, you, can, you can push this one and really think about, it's a steel frame and then how you put together all the, uh, the wood stuff, which joints you are using. This is really relevant for, for, the, for this assembly, but there's a big, uh, big thing I was, I was mentioning uh, for the Volksbank, the thing with the concrete and the slabs and the physics, which you can't solve. So if you tear down Volksbank or disassemble the building, there will be one major problem. Then there's a huge amount of concrete estrich on top of the wooden structure, which you can't like recycle. So the, the challenges are like material, invent, inventing good materials. We, ha we hardly have sustainable material in the building industry. We have like a little bit of wood, uh, a little bit of clay and some good products and the all other stuff is like mainly the stuff we know like for 40 or 50 years, which is also quite reasonable and good, but it's not very sustainable. So if, you, if you're talking about this assembly, you need new products, but you have to think how you put things together. And we just have, uh, we are now uh, working on those new projects with this uh, topic and we did with the tap house in, in Kuehe, which is uh, south of, of Copenhagen, just in a very small project. And I think one of the main problems, as you might know, is also having the information on the products, having people that are collecting these things like 
Concular. I don't know if you know them. You might know there are different firms now coming up, uh, collecting those building materials and yeah, selling them again. So that's one major problem. Uh, not a problem, it's a challenge. So. You know, thank you very much again yeah. for uh, taking the time yeah. and uh, being here at AC. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks.